Hey, what's up, guys? This is T-Bone here. Welcome back to another episode of playing Legendary Game of Heroes. So today I'm going to be talking about the upcoming event, which is uh, going to be the Player Celebration Month Part 1. It's also a vault event, and it's Fire Slayer. So I want to talk about the contents of the pack itself. Uh, we can also talk about the updates uh, for this particular anniversary month, uh, sort of, you know, part one, what it's all about. And then we're going to talk about the cards and sort of tell you whether or not it's worth it. And so the first thing is uh, being in, you know, a vault event, it's the same as the previous light commander event where the cards are all in a single vault and you do need to use gems to open. And so uh, we can go through that pack, uh, sort of pack pull as well. And then there are VIP bonuses in the vault. Again, I'm going to talk about it and talk about whether there is value in it or not. So if you're a VIP player, you're definitely going to get some bonuses. And this is going to be for the next month. That means the next four events, you're going to be getting uh, some bonuses there in both of, uh, the pack opening as well as the inbox gifts. There's also uh, going to be Frenzy Boss uh, information, which you can take a look at as well. And then the actual event will open tomorrow with additional information that's going to come up in the news feed the following day. So we're not going to have more information at this point. But uh, right now, what I can tell you is that as a VIP, uh, you are going to get additional items. And personally, I think that, you know, um, there are just enough bonuses for me to to go for the investment so I, I went for another month of vip so my personal thinking is that um it's enough value for me to go for it so that's why i i did it and we can talk about this as well so let's go through the information first so in the various tiers um the first thing you can take a look at if you look at the information is that the content itself. So again, I wanted to explain a little bit about the gold rewards as well as silver rewards. You can see that there are different numbers in here, the master collection card and the ultra rare. There are numbers below them that tells you how many there are actually in the vault. There are some that have number ones in them. Uh, so there is exactly one shiny master collection card. And then there is also a separate uh, master collection card that has a 100. That's because there is a guarantee at tier six. And so this is a guaranteed one. It does pull from the vault. That's why it's included in the content here. And again, there are also silver rewards, which are your uh, event cards, as well as your support cards. And then all the other uh, cards that are possible in here, uh, these are the common rewards. If you go into the tiers, then this is the tier structure. So you can see that every single tier, uh, there are some contents in there. The guaranteed support card starts at tier two, and then at tier three, you get a main event relic. So a total of 2,400 gems will get you a support card plus a relic and potential for any other um, any other cards that's in the vault as well. Now, being a VIP, you will get a bonus vault card on tiers one. Basically, every single tier, you're gonna get a bonus vault card. Now, as you go up in the tiers, um, you know, a single vault card bonus doesn't seem quite a lot, but at lower tiers from one through three, you're getting three additional uh, pulls compared to before where you can get a total of six. You see one, two, that's three, and another three at tier three. You get a total of six vault card pulls as non-VIP and as VIP you get nine total so that's you know basically a 33% increase in your uh, or I should say 50% increase in your total there so from going from six to nine so that's you know that that is a nice amount there and as far as the cards are concerned you can take a look at uh, we can look at the ultra rare card here it is what we call the double attack so uh, despots of despair you can see that it has you can see the battle skill here will create three fire power gem fours, five power gem twos, and then it will receive the bonus, uh, bonus attack buff, which means it will strike an additional time, and this time it will deal exactly two hundred percent of the damage. So this is actually um, almost exactly the same as the light commander event, uh, the scholars but this actually has increased damage. So the ultimate hero attacks for 200% of its attack compared to 150%. And so this is going to be a really powerful ultra rare hero, uh, ultimate hero. This is the, the type of deck that I've talked about in the past. It is one of the most powerful decks. Uh, so it is worth investing in if you're going for it. Uh, we can take a look at the master collection card as well. So Red Ash the Brutalizer. This one, all so this is a little bit weaker than the ultimate hero, ultimate form. Uh, it has the same battle skill, a similar battle skill in that it'll create three fire power gen fours, and then it will deal 150% of the damage, the uh, basically the, at the, as in the next attack. And it does have a 
another skill here. So every four turns, it will create four power, uh, four firepower gem twos. So again, instead of creating three uh, firepower gems, it creates four. So this is a little bit uh, better here. And this is a noble killer. And it's a spirit uh, type. And the ultra rare card, uh, Flame Veiled Corruptor, will actually uh, create four firepower gem twos, and then it will increase the attack up to 20% though, so it's a little bit less in terms of the attack bonus. We can take a look at the comparison as well, just to see how that fares against the light version. But in, before that, let's go ahead and take a look at the support card to finalize the card um, comparison. So Blave Ashen Wraith is the support card here, and what it'll do is it'll create eight fire gems and it does heal for 5,000%. Uh, 5, now typically um, you will be pairing this particular deck with other cards that can um, that can really deal a lot of uh, damage output and with this particular type really the best uh, option is to simply go with multiple master collection cards. So this is the type of deck where multiple master collection cards will actually uh, be a little bit better than uh, multiple ultra rare cards. So that's something to keep in mind. You do get a guaranteed master collection card at tier six. So if we compare it to the Relentless Scholars, which is the light uh, Slayer version of this deck, you can see that uh, it only, you know, the difference is that um, 200% versus 150%, and every four turns, it you know the light version creates three light power gem twos, and the fire version creates three, um, uh, creates four. Uh, firepower gen twos and then the master collection card uh again it's the um it's the passive the passive is different so every four turns it creates three for the light version and for the fire version it creates four so this is a more powerful version of the deck so that makes it that much stronger and again creates more firepower gems as well so this is the type of deck that is going to be really powerful and um again like i said you're not going to regret going after this but if you don't get the master collection card or if you don't get the ultra rare uh then the support card at least will be a good uh, gen spawn and we can talk about what cards you can pair with that. So let's go ahead and open up a couple of uh, tiers here. So we have just enough for three tiers. And again, like I said, this is um, the the deck that I think is worth going after if you choose to go for it and you're not going to uh, feel like it's not useful because this is the type of deck that can also work really well in a com commander event. So let's go ahead and open a vault. We're going to go three tiers and we are going to receive the additional bonus here from the... Uh, from being VIP, and so we can take a look and see what cards we get uh, for this. So tier one, uh, let's see what we get here. So we have uh, two cards there from the vault, and you get uh, some master dust as well as some potions, and we get a gem gift. So tier one, uh, we didn't get anything there. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull from the second tier, and let's hope for something good here. So this is where you're going to be guaranteed a support card. As well now I can also uh, craft I can almost craft the the ultimate form uh, through dust so we can try that as well so that's the scorched horseman which I believe is the I didn't take a look at the name I think that might be the ultra rare if so that would be really good because I can actually uh, craft no that's the that's the main card. So the Scorch Horseman is the main card, which creates three power gen ones. Oh yeah, so I didn't actually talk about the Scorch Horseman. So this one, um, yeah, so this one is the same. So the main card didn't actually change. So this will create three power gen ones, and then it will deal 75% uh, damage the next turn. So uh, this is a an option if you don't get a Master Collection card or uh, the, you know, the ultimate form, this can be useful as well. So we're gonna go ahead and open up a uh, tier Three right now so we're gonna use 1400 gems we're gonna get the relic and hope for some cards from the vault also so let's take a look and see what we get here so this is tier three and this is a so we got the relic this is what we expected and here is another support card so we got two uh, we got actually two relics here from uh, from this tier and here is another Scorch Horseman. And then we got the Ultra Rare. That's the Flame Veil Corruptor. So pretty good pull actually on Tier 3. We've got two Relics plus the Ultra Rare. And also a... Um, 
Yeah, so we got a main card, we got the support card, as well as the ultra rare, and we have two relics. Would have been really great if it was a different relic so I could actually get, um, so I can actually get the ultimate relic, but I'm not going to, um, to actually complain there. So those are the three pulls right there. And again, like I said, it is going to be uh, worth it. And I can also craft the master collection card right now to get the ultimate form, which I will do so. Uh, so let's go ahead and collect our dust also. And so what we can do here is uh, I can also go ahead and craft this because it, I don't plan on opening. I, I, I can put potentially save my gems to pull from. Uh, I would expect there to be additional um, additional vaults, but I'm going to go ahead and craft it because I, I do, uh, you know, if I get them, then that just means I'm going to get additional copies of the Master Collection card. And so now we can go ahead and forge the ultimate ultimate form as well so let go, let's go ahead and do that and so you can see here the stats are kind of insane it starts at 8.3 thousand for uh for level one and we do have a bunch of cards here so i'm gonna have to clear some out if we were to test them out so what i'm gonna do before i sign off here is i'm just gonna start building up a couple of uh, decks here i'm probably not gonna be able to to play through because i do need to clear a lot of cards um but let's go ahead and see so i'm not gonna be able to clear any of these except for these for this card right here and I'm gonna clear out the hammer of the Darren and Alban is reborn so we're gonna go ahead and clear that out and we still have seven cards to go through so let's just go ahead and build a team and then uh, we can talk about that so the first thing is if you have um, if you have a master collection color let's say so let's say that's what you get uh, it is a really good card to use so what you can do is you can pair this with your support card so what it can do is this will give you um, additional gems i think i had two of those so let's say you get two of them you do get a, a second one from the collection as well then some of the other cards that you can definitely go after so we can look at the fire cards the first option is going to be um i think raw and thoth are okay but they don't generate additional fire gems if you don't get four power gem fours so that's the thing you do need to get another card that can get you power gem fours but they're always a good option especially if you can get that so even though they are um commander cards it's still going to be really useful and if you can get another card that can create uh, power gen force because i don't think this creates four i think this creates at most three power gen force so this could actually be an option um because it creates three power gen force on turn two if you if you on turn one if you can get enough power gen force uh through your relics then you can activate um you can activate your master collection card and this actually will work out so you can actually use this i'm going to show you this deck right so you can actually have this set up and it's going to be a really strong deck the master collection card by itself is going to be able to fill up the board along with two raws here so that's a good option another good option would be using the um let's see i let me see if i have that card i'm thinking about bedeviled uh venna so bedeviled venna is also a good option because of its ability to um, create gems and i don't know if i have her it doesn't look like i have her at this moment so i will i'll talk about it in a future video if i can get her uh, basically bedevil uh, venna is a card that could actually create power gems based on the number of gems on the board so i think it's a corrupt fire type and so you can see here bedeviled venna so this card you, i could get back uh for 30 dust if i needed it but this card what it'll do is it'll create one fire power gem two for every five that's on the board and so when you pair it up with a, a couple of support cards like the uh, blave which creates eight gems on the board uh you you can really then use that to fill in the, the missing power gems on the board so that's going to be a really good option as well and so we can also take a look as, as i mentioned you do get uh um, vip uh, items so we can claim this and see what uh, these are uh, throughout the 
throughout the the basically the events so the first thing we got is a fire slayer dust and there could be anything it could be uh, multiple things that include um you know we saw some dust and they can also give sometimes they've given uh bastion shards as well so not sure what it's going to be so uh, so that was the pull there. Again, I did get pretty lucky there, and also the increased number of cards helped me as well. So I do have the team here, and so the next uh, event, so the next video what I'm going to show are a couple of um, different ideas on what you can do. And before I sign up again, the reason why I say this is a good deck also in Commander is because you could do something like this, where you switch this with uh, uh, an Ascendant Ray, and what you can now get is a really good commander uh, deck that combines commander bonus as well as your um, your fire slayer for additional uh, you know nuke damage for the you know, for extra punch. This is what I did in a light commander uh, event last event, and it worked out really well. So that's it for this episode. Hopefully, you find this helpful uh, in terms of understanding. Uh, whether or not this deck is is good to go after and also uh think understanding uh, you know getting a view of what the vip events like so thanks a lot for watching i will see you in the next episode take care